Good morning everyone and welcome to the third day of National Apprenticeship Week um, and our third form time session exploring apprenticeship opportunities within STEM. This morning we are joined by Kerry from Will William Hare. Um, William Hare are an organisation that specialises in structural steel engineering and Kerry will be talking a little bit about the organisation, what they do, the roles and, and skills needed to work in the firm. Um, Kerry, over to you. Thank you very much, Jane. Much appreciated. Good morning, everybody. So as Jane said, um, I work for William Hare. My name's Kerry. I'm the Learning and Development Manager. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background to William Hare and what we do and then just talk to you about some of the different opportunities in terms of apprenticeships. So a little bit of background about William Hare. So our, the origins of our company go way back to the 1880s and we've been fabricating or making steel since 1945. We've got a turnover of 200 million a year and we produce around 165,000 tonnes of steel. So in the UK, um, we've got 700 staff. Quite a lot of those are based in Bury, um, which is where our head office is. And we also have one of our production sites in Bury. But as you can see, we, we, we're we worldwide and we've got around 2000 employees worldwide. So what do we do then? So very simply, we create huge big steel structures for buildings so that they have the strength to hold the walls and the roof and they don't actually fall down or collapse. So our engineers design the steel structures, our fabricators and welders will then make the structures and our construction teams out on the building sites will then put that steel structure together, ready for then other people to come in and do the bricks and the electrics and the windows and the doors and all that kind of stuff. So there's a couple of visuals here just to sort of show you what we do. So we always start off with either a 3D or a 4D model of the structure that we actually need to create. So this is a this is a real one from work. Those are then turned into actual drawings. So we need to be able to work out all the sizes of all the different beams and the columns and the pieces of steel and how they all actually fit together. So if you really like design and you're into your maths, this is a good option for you. From there, all those drawings go into our production site to what we call fabrication and all those pieces of steel are then made from those drawings and all the mathematical um, workings out that are on those drawings. Once all the steel's ready, they then sent out onto the construction site where they're actually then all put together like a big like a big jigsaw on the construction site. And then we have the final, final thing. So some of you might recognise this. It was the London Olympic Stadium um, and it's now West Ham's football ground. So we did um, the roof for the Olympic Stadium. So I'm going to introduce you to a couple of our apprentices. So this is Matt. Matt has now been with us for four years actually now um, and what he does is he uses the 3D modelling software to create the, the drawings of the steel so the fabrication drawings that we saw earlier so he actually does the drawings of the beams and the columns that then get sent down to our fabrication workshop he will add connections to the beams and columns so that we knows how they're going to fit together and he'll talk to the welders and the fabricators so that they know exactly how that steel needs to be made the steel also needs to be painted to protect it. So he also creates paint drawings so that our paint shop knows where to paint and what to paint on the steel. So if it's in a building, most steel will need fireproof paint. So this is Leona. Leona is one of our craft apprentices. She's just finished her four year apprenticeship. Um, so what she does is she'll use a massive big crane to pick up steel. Um, so a steel beam and she'll put that onto her bench. She'll look at the drawings that Matt's done to see what needs welding and how all that steel fits together. Very importantly, she'll make sure she uses all the correct safety gear or PPE, as we call it, before she starts to weld the steel. So that's to keep her and her colleagues safe. She's incredibly particular about her, her welding, so she'll always make sure that she polishes up her weld so that they're the best in the factory. The jobs then she'll send off to an inspector to be tested and she'll get another job. Leona's very particular, as I say, about her jobs and she always makes sure that they don't ever come back from the inspectors. 
So David is another one of our technical apprentices. So David did his four year apprenticeship with us an advanced apprenticeship at level three. And he's now actually in his third year of doing his Bachelor of Engineering degree with Liverpool John Moores University. And that is all part of his apprenticeship and paid for by William Hare. So David will attend project meetings with what we call clients. So that's customers, um, architects and other engineers to discuss changes within any particular project. So if somebody wants something changing in terms of how that steel looks, David will work with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. He'll talk to the engineers on the building site to make sure the steel gets put up correctly. And if there's any problems at all with the project, he will try and create solutions. And he ensures that everything arrives on site for the steel erectors to do their job. So there's lots of materials needed, the drawings, the bolts to put everything together. So David is, is certainly one of our, our, our rising stars in terms of being an apprentice. So he's won numerous awards um, over the last couple of years. So our, our last apprentice today that I'm going to talk about is Chris and Chris is a quantity surveyor. So what Chris does is he will predict how much it costs to actually create a building. He'll look at the drawings that have been created and he'll calculate how much it will cost to create what is on those drawings. He'll hold meetings with clients and customers in different parts of the country. He visits construction sites and factories. Most importantly, what Chris does is make sure we make a profit from the project. So basically we make money because without making money, none of us can be paid. So Chris's job is really important in terms of making sure that we, we're bringing the money in. So Chris is doing a degree apprenticeship and he's, he's just in his last couple of weeks at Salford University and he's looking like he's going to get a first class honours degree. So what kind of qualifications do you need? So if you're going into craft like the owner or maintenance, it's five GCSEs, grades four to nine. Does need to include English language, maths and science. However, with craft, if you do get a three, um, we, can, we can consider you, you will need to do a, an assessment. For the technical design and engineering like Matt and David, you do need five GCSEs again, um, but you do need a grade six in maths because there is an opportunity to further your career by going to do um, a degree. So Chris, who is our commercial um, quantity surveying apprentice, slightly higher grades here. So you do need grades five to nine. Again, you need to have a six in your maths and you do need to have gone on to college to do A-levels or a B-tech. So some of you might have heard of UCAS points. So they're the points that you need to get into university. And for this one, you need 104. So if you were doing A-levels, that's grades B, C and C. We look for things like, you know, maths, economics, physics, those kind of topics. Um, or you could get an A, a C and a D at A level or at your BTEC, we'd be looking at probably a distinction and two merits for those. So what everybody wants to know is what will I earn? So in your first year doing craft and welding, it's around £260 a week. These do change year on year because we do give pay increases. Technical drawing apprentices start on similar, but they're paid per annum, so it's 13,500. And if you're doing a degree apprenticeship, so quantity surveying, that's at 18,500, which is around £350 a week. So you don't pay for your qualifications. So you'll do a job, you'll be trained, you'll go to college and you'll be paid. So a lot of our apprentices talk about, um, they use the term earn and learn, so you can earn and learn at the same time. But what about the future then? So what could you earn in the future? So once you're qualified as a fabricator welder, it's around twenty three and a half thousand per annum. If you're a junior engineer, twenty four thousand. But here's some of the big numbers. So if you can work your way up to an engineering manager, you're looking at around seventy thousand pounds a year and a quantity surveyor um, about forty thousand pounds a year. So we will have some apprenticeship uh, vacancies advertised. They'll be advertised on our website at www.hair.com from March. So if anybody's got any questions, um, please pop them through into the chat um, and Jane will, will shout those out and I'll be only too pleased to, you know, to answer those. So thank you for joining us. Thanks, Kerry, that was brilliant. Um, so we we have we do have a couple of questions that have come in okay. so far. Who founded the company? 
Oh, so a, a, a gentleman called Bartle Hodgkiss. Um, so Bartle started the company and it's still to this day a family run business. So his grandchildren and his great grandchildren are still involved in running that business. That's the Hodgkiss family. Thank you. Amazing. Um, and then another one. Is a degree apprenticeship better than a normal degree? Um, it's exactly the same degree. So, for example, if we take the quantity surveying degree, um, we use Salford University for that one. So you could go to Salford University and spend three years full time doing the quantity surveying degree and you would come out at the end with exactly the same degree that we would offer. But you, with us, you would do it part time for five years. The big difference is, is that um, doing the degree full time, you would obviously pay for that um, in, in the long run with student loans. Doing a degree apprenticeship with an employer, the employer makes sure that is funded for you. So there's there's no cost to yourselves through doing the apprenticeship degree. It just takes a little bit longer because it takes five years, but it's you're also in a job. You're also learning the job at the same time and you're being paid. Amazing, thanks. Thanks, Kerry. Um, and then it, the question is, do you have to be 18? But I'm assuming it means do you have to be 18 to to sign up or apply for your apprenticeship? OK, so no, we take we take lots of school leavers. We take school leavers and college leavers. So no, you can be um, as long as you've finished year 11, um, so for those people that are looking for this year, we don't start our apprentices until September anyway. So there's plenty of time, even if we advertise them in March. So no, we have 16 year olds. We even have 30 year olds being apprentices at William Hare. But obviously for a degree apprenticeship, you do need to have those A levels or B tech. So you will have needed to have gone to college. But again, you can apply to us at, at 20, at 21, at 24, as I say, even 30. So no, as long as you finish school, then you can apply for an apprenticeship at William Hare. And how many apprentices do you recruit per year? OK, great, great, great question. That does change from year to year, if I'm totally honest. So some years it might be six, some years it could be 18. Um, so for this year, we will be advertising and, and bear in mind that we do work around the country. So but in terms of the Berry area, we will be looking for and this wasn't one that I did mention, but production controllers. So production controllers, um, that's an advanced apprenticeship and you will do a technical support qualification. So that's working in our factories, making sure that production is, is controlled and that you know everything works from, from one end of the factory to the other. So it's part office based, part shop floor. Um, so the other apprenticeship that we're advertising for will be um, a maintenance apprentice. So that's electrical stroke mechanical. You can join us straight from school with both of those um, or you can come to us after college if maybe you've done, you know, a BTEC, but you don't need a BTEC RA levels for those. And then the last one that we'll be advertising will be a degree apprenticeship for the quantity surveyors. So you do need to be a college leaver for that one because you need the UCAS points. We may advertise fabrication and welding, but I've got to review that with our managers probably in March time. So they're the ones that will be advertising from March on our, on our website for Berry. And then there's a similar question with a, with a little bit of an add on on the end, okay. um, which is again, how many apprentices do you take on each year? And if applications open in March, when do the apprentices actually start? OK, so just a tiny bit about the process then. So applications we'll take in March. We we'll, obviously we will look at those as they come in. We will look to interview then sort of April time, maybe early May. Um, from there, you will then do an initial assessment in June or July with the training provider just to make sure because we, we all know that obviously GCSEs and A-levels and BTECs this year are being assessed um, very differently than 
doing your normal exams. So we will need to do an initial assessment and then everybody will start at the same time the first week in September. Under normal circumstances, we will do a week's induction. We'll have to wait and see how that goes this year, um, where we are obviously with COVID. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Kerry. Um, no there's one here that I can answer. What does okay. BTEC actually stand for? BTEC stands for Business and Technology Education Council. So it's actually an awarding body as well as a type of qualification. Um, so I hope that answers that question. And then <laughs> which, which qualification is best if you want to buy houses? and then renovate them and sell them on. OK, um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm assuming that you want to do that for a job then or, or for you personally. Um, I would look at a BTEC in construction and the built environment in terms of something like that. It depends whether you want to renovate yourself. So if you want to renovate yourself, then you might want to think about, you know, um, doing a trade. So maybe um, becoming an electrician, doing um, plastering, that kind of stuff. So you could pick up a trade or you could go and do something like um, construction in the built environment or even business, because if you're going to be buying and selling houses and renovating them, then you will need to know a little bit about business, about money, about mortgages, that kind of thing. So hopefully that helps. It's not something we do at William Hare, but hopefully that will help. I'm going to put these two questions together because okay. they, they're similar. Where can we find out more information and how do you apply? OK, so um, you can get more information by going to our website at www.hair.com. Um, and when we advertise those jobs, so when you go on the website, you'll see um, where it says vacancies. If you click on to vacancies, from the start of March, that is where you'll see the jobs advertised and there will be more information about the jobs on, on the actual website. But if any jobs that are apprenticeships that people are applying for, I would always suggest that you do your homework. And I know homework's probably a dirty word if you're a student. Um, but what I mean by homework is go and have a look at the website of the different organisations that you're applying to, because a little tip here is one of the first questions I always ask people at interview is, what do you know about William Hare? And the people that impress me the most are the people that can tell me a little bit about what they've found out. So my, my suggestion to everybody is if you are interested in our apprenticeships before they're even advertised on our website in March, is go and have a look at the Hare website and just find out a little bit more about what we do and the projects and a little bit more about the company. It's such a good piece of advice. Um, something similar was mentioned in our Monday morning session with AstraZeneca to go and look at company values um, and mission statements because it's it's really useful to know and be able to reflect on in interviews and on the application form. Um, so what are best A levels for your apprenticeships? OK, so if you're thinking of the quantity surveying apprenticeship, um, maths is probably the crucial one because there is the, there's a lot of number work involved. So um, we're not we don't specifically say what A levels, but we do look for and favour maths, physics, economics, business, um, chemistry. So it's the sciences, it's business. Th those kinds of things are the ones that we do favour the most. And then what's more important to you? grades or work experience? Oh wow, that is absolutely an amazing question. So actually it, it's both. Um, the reason why we value the grades is because an apprenticeship is the same. If you think of it as the same as going to college. So if you wanted to go to college and you wanted to do A-level maths and you'd got a grade three in your maths, the college would probably not allow you to do A-level maths because it would be, it, you know, it's a tough A-level. If you got a grade six, then they would allow you to do A-level maths. So grades are important for being able to get onto the college or university course. Um, but I do look for work experience and that doesn't always mean work experience where you've done a week at a company. That could be that, you know, you have a, a Saturday job in a cafe. 
you know, you work at McDonald's, um, you're, a, you're a football referee, a junior football referee. So it could be any kind of work experience. For me, the work experience is really important because there's a big difference between coming from school and college into the workplace. Um, so it just helps you to make that transition. So one, the grades are needed just to recap to get you onto the apprenticeship in terms of the college or uni course. But I love reading a CV where someone's got work experience. Now, I know that's very difficult this time round because of what's happened in the last 12 months with COVID. I know it's been really difficult for young people to get part time jobs and work experience. So if you have done something like um, any fundraising through school, if you are on the school council, if you are, a, you know, ahead of, ahead of your, your year, um, if you have done Duke of Edinburgh, please make sure that those things that, you know, if you're the captain of the football or the volleyball or the netball team, some kind of leadership role, please make sure that that information is on your CV because they're all the kinds of things that I look for, you know, that a young person has just maybe done something a little bit different. Um, and then last one, we are running over, um, is do you expect there to be less vacancies this year because of the economic downturn? What a great question. Whoever asked that, maybe think about going to an economics at A-level. Brilliant question. Um, for us, um, certainly last year, we didn't take any apprentices, which is very, very unusual. And that wasn't around the economic downturn. It was more about keeping people safe. Um, because we're most of us are working from home, but the people in our, our factories um, aren't and we've absolutely got to keep people safe. So <clears throat> we are probably going to take around a similar amount of apprentices this year as we would have done, um, except for fabrication and welding. We just want to be absolutely guaranteed we can keep people safe. I've had a look on some, you know, some of the big websites that are out there, you know, the GMAX website, um, the, the government website, find an apprenticeship, um, not going to uni.com, all those kind of websites. And there are still lots and lots of apprenticeships being offered. Um, so I, I don't see there being massively less than normal. Now the last one, I promise. Okay. What's the highest, so, okay. Now, uh, what's the highest level apprenticeship you're giving, offering? Okay. OK, so ours, so we have so our just to give you the levels. So we've got advanced apprenticeships, which are production control and maintenance. They're at level three. Um, so that is equivalent to A levels or a BTEC. Um, but the highest one is our degree apprenticeship, which is level six, which is the quantity surveying. I have heard, though, which is fantastic for us, that there's going to be a higher apprenticeship at level four being rolled out for maintenance. So um, the maintenance role, there probably will be an opportunity at the end of the four years to then go and do a higher apprenticeship at level four, which is really exciting. I, I like our apprentices to be able to, to, to progress. And, you know, if you do a level three apprenticeship, you can then go on to do a level four. Or if you do a level three, maybe go on and do a level six degree apprenticeship. So there's always opportunities um, and I'm always open to conversations with people. So I had a, a gentleman who works in IT, he's doing his level four apprenticeship at the minute and he approached me last week and said, is there an opportunity to do a degree apprenticeship? So we've already gone and found one, having conversations with his manager, and it's looking like he's going to start that in October. So there's always opportunities to, to, to move, you know, and do, do further apprenticeships with us and further qualifications. That's amazing. Um, that's it for today. Well, for this session anyway, we do have um, information on apprenticeships and current vacancies on our website, the Great Manchester Apprenticeship and Careers Service, which is gmax.co.uk. I've put the link in the Q&A box um, and there is also information on GMAX about other sessions that are happening this week as part of National Apprenticeship Week um, that will support, inform you um, and give you information. That's it. Thanks for joining. Have a lovely day and we hope to see you at tomorrow morning session two. Thank you.